Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about camera stabilizers. Specifically, what you need to know to be able to design and build one of your own. This will be a multi-part series, and this video is going to focus on calculating centroids and uh, delve into centers of gravity a little bit. These are two concepts that you're going to need to be intimately familiar with if you're going to be able to design any sort of stable stabilizer. If you already know how to calculate centroids and centers of gravity, go ahead and skip this and go on to the actual kind of design build portion. Otherwise, come have a seat and let's get started. So let's say you've got some arbitrary shape like this with a hole in it. What we need though are a couple dimensions. So let me add those. You know all the dimensions of your part, which is great. There are many, many tables online. If you just search for a list of centroids or centroid tables or things like that, you will find what you're looking for. The problem is, a shape like this is not going to be found in the centroid table. So what do you do? You break it up into shapes that are in the centroid table. You can use either additive or subtractive means to calculate centroids. Typically, you want to do it in as few steps as possible. Let me show you what I mean. If you want to do this by additive means, you could break it up like this. So that involves calculating one, two, three, four different things. Using the subtractive method, we only need to calculate three things. The entire rectangle, this hole here, and then this piece that was chopped off. The center of any rectangle is, of course, right in the middle of the rectangle. The center of a circle is, of course, right in the middle of the circle. And a triangle is a little bit weird, but its centroid from this base here is one-third of its height. Its centroid is one-third of its height up from its other base. So here we have one. So the centroid of our triangle is right there. It really helps to make a design table. You should definitely use Excel when you're designing things like this. Uh, especially for camera stabilizers because you have lots of different masses in lots of different positions and you're going to want to be able to play with them and move things around. Like, what if this hole is in the wrong spot? Or maybe I chopped off too much of this stuff over here. Well, let's maybe move this hole. Maybe let's enlarge this triangle here that we chopped off. If you do this all by hand, it's going to be a real pain anytime you go to change anything. So I definitely recommend you set this up in Excel or something so that you can make one change and your whole sheet will update. So we have the big rectangle, we have the hole, and we have the triangle. I like to add its dimensions next, x and y. The next thing to do would be to probably go ahead and calculate their areas. The next thing that I like to do, and mark the location of their centroids. You'll have a centroid in the x and a centroid in the y. So what we're going to do now to calculate the moments of all this and figure out where everything is concentrated is we're going to take the areas of each shape and we're going to multiply that by its location. This is just like a lever. It's a force at a distance. Well, here it's just an area at a distance. It's really not much different. The hole and the triangle are pieces that we took out. So I need to make sure that these moments are negative because we need to subtract them back out. So let's put a big old negative sign in front of the area to remind ourselves to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and sum up these moments. So I've summed up all my moments for x and y. I've summed all my areas here. Now, sum of the moments over sum of the masses, or areas in our case. Calculate these two out, and we'll know where the center of gravity of our entire shape, or centroid in our case, is. So that's how you calculate the centroid of something. It's really not that tough, but I definitely recommend that you set it up in Excel so that as you go to make changes during your design, you can do that easily. Of course, if you use SolidWorks or AutoCAD, they will go ahead and do all this for you, so it's much, much easier. But this is how you do it. For any real design, you're going to have something that's made up of multiple parts. So you'll have things with different masses and different densities. Instead of areas here, we could have added another column or just scrapped this one all together and put in a column for mass. So that when we go to calculate the moments, we would multiply the mass instead of the area times the centroid location. We would sum all those up, so we would have the sum of your mass moments over the sum of your masses instead of the sum of your areas. And of course, anything that you build, of course, is going to have some thickness, 
so you'll have to run this whole same system in the Z direction as well. But it's really no different. You just look up the centroids and things for that direction. This is useful because counterweights or anything that you're going to add to build your stabilizer is going to probably some kind of complex shape. So you're going to need to know how to calculate the centroid and its center of gravity so that you can then figure out its inertia of the entire system. I hope this helps explain how to calculate centroids. It's really not all that difficult. Now remember, this is a prequel to my series on how to build camera stabilizers. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay updated with this series and any other might follow. I'm Mike Thompson. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.